Hello there, how are you doing? I hope you're doing great and keeping well. Thank you very much for joining me in this third lesson in Ian Lowe's Welsh Course for Absolute Beginners, 2022-23. And the title of this lesson is Pronunciation, Week 1, Monday, Stanzas 1 to 5. Well, in case you're wondering, that's a bit of a strange title, Week 1, Monday, Stanzas 1 to 5. What exactly does that mean? Well, all will be revealed shortly. But before we do that, I'd just like to explain the learning methodology of this course. So here, generally, is the main thrust of how this whole course works. So first of all, we have the student, who starts off being a... Parrot. And what this means is that the student has to learn parrot fashion, five Welsh stanzas a day, seven days a week, for a period of 12 weeks. And then after that, on the 13th week, that is a week of rest. And then after the 13th week, the whole cycle of the 12 weeks starts all over again. So there are exactly four 13 weeks within the year. So within one year, the student should be able to cycle through parrot fashion, all the stanzas in this course, four times. So that is the idea, that the student should repeat these stanzas again and again, and in so doing, gain the pronunciation and vocabulary that is so important in learning the language. And as well as this, while the student is reciting or learning these stanzas five a day, the student is also practicing speaking Pigeon Welsh. So you might have come across the terms Creole and Pigeon. Both terms apply to the situation when two languages combine together. In the case of Creole, this is where two languages have existed for a long time, and in so doing, a third language has developed out of the two, where the grammar structures and syntax and vocabulary are fairly static and well-defined, such as in the case of Tok Pisin, which is spoken in Papua New Guinea, which is a combination of English and the various languages over there, and it has a very well-defined syntax and grammar structure, as well as vocabulary, so that is Creole, whereas in the case of Pidgin, it's where two languages have coexisted for a very long time, but this has not led to the creation of a third language, which is the combination of the two, but rather the people living in that environment are able to interchange in and out of both languages, so that develops a language or a dialect that is understood by the people living in that locality, but it doesn't have permanently defined syntax or grammar structures or vocabulary. The speakers of that pidgin language just interchange in and out of both languages whenever it suits them. So what happens in this course is that the student will practice speaking Welsh, but because we're still at the beginning stage of learning Welsh, the student will not have a lot of Welsh vocabulary or understanding of the syntax. So in order to communicate effectively in Welsh, in a Welsh-speaking environment, the student will need to speak Pigeon Welsh. And this is something that the student can do fluently at the very start. We don't need to go to a Welsh-speaking area and try to speak in pure Welsh as beginners in learning the language and find ourselves at a loss for words and vocabulary and the correct way of forming syntax structures and the correct conjugation, for example, of words and prepositions, we can walk straight into a cafe and start speaking fluent Welsh. But it won't be standard Welsh, because that takes some time in learning, but it will be pigeon Welsh with syntax and vocabulary borrowed from English. And we can do that because the person we're talking that pigeon language to, that pigeon Welsh to, will be able to understand everything that we say, because they will be able to understand the English words and syntax, and they will be able to understand the Welsh words and syntax as well. So that is the wonderful thing about learning Welsh. We can speak fluent Welsh straight away. And after we spend some time speaking this pigeon Welsh, we will develop into a master speaker of pigeon Welsh. So once we become a master speaker of pigeon Welsh, then with a much broader range of vocabulary in the Welsh language and also a much broader understanding of the Welsh syntax, we can very easily turn ourselves from a master speaker of Pigeon Welsh into a proficient or expert speaker of Standard Welsh. So this is the general approach that we'll be taking in learning how to become a fluent speaker 
in standard modern Welsh. So what exactly does this mean in terms of the daily nitty-gritty of studying this course? Well, these are the steps that we'll be following. Step 1, starting next Monday. We will learn parrot fashion, five stanzas every day, up to a total of 420 stanzas in the 12th week. And once we've completed the 12th week, we'll take one week's rest on the 13th week, and then we'll continue doing it again for the entire 420 stanzas every 12 weeks. So every day, we'll need to learn one stanza before breakfast, and one stanza before lunch, and one stanza before tea time, and one stanza before supper, and one stanza before bedtime. So that makes five stanzas per day for seven days a week. And then after that, we'll rest the voice completely during the 13th week, and then recycle starting again from the Monday of the first week, the following week. And then we'll continue likewise, quarter after quarter, year after year, until we gain fluency. And in the meantime, using the vocabulary that we will have learnt, we can practice speaking Pigeon Welsh. And over the course of months or years of speaking Pigeon Welsh, we'll turn from a Pigeon speaker to a Master Pigeon speaker. And then over the course of months or years, we'll turn from the Master Pigeon speaker to a fluent speaker of Standard Welsh. So that is the action plan for the entire duration of this course. But coming back to this lesson, we'll be focusing on pronunciation. So what are the general pronunciation rules in Welsh? Well, firstly, all vowels and consonants are constant sounds. That is to say, they are fixed sounds that do not change in a conscious sound, but due to the physiognomy of the mouth working with the accent patterns in Welsh, they can be unconsciously altered by the physiognomy of the mouth. So that is quite a detailed statement. What exactly does it mean? Well, in a long syllable, i.e. the accented final syllable, which is where the accent falls in Welsh, the constant vowels naturally narrow due to the physical mechanism of the mouth. This is an unconscious phenomenon caused by the physiognomy of the mouth during speech and not a conscious act by the speaker. This contrasts to English, where the final vowel is always usually short, occupying the central position, whereas in Welsh, the final vowel is always long, therefore it has to move to the next word, causing the narrowing from, for example, t, meaning house, t, to t. For example, in unemphasized a known thing, or the known thing, the words a uh and the are pronounced with the vowel sound uh, whereas if we wish to emphasize the words uh or the, due to the very length and emphasis on these words, the vowels actually change in sound, but this is done not consciously, but is done through the physiognomy of the mouth. So for example, if I were to emphasize these words now, so instead of saying uh as in a known thing, or the as in the known thing, I say a known thing, or the known thing, the unknown thing becomes a known thing, and the known thing becomes the known thing. So if we were to illustrate it diagrammatically, we can have the green arrow here indicating the central position of the mouth cavity, from where the schwa sound, or the a uh sound in a known thing, or the known thing, is produced. So this is spoken with the mouth slightly open, but if we need to pronounce the next word, which could start with a consonant, then we might need to close the cavity of the mouth slightly in order to produce the next consonant sound. So this causes a narrowing of the mouth cavity, so the vowel sound now comes from a position which is slightly further back in the mouth cavity. So we change from a uh sound to an a sound as we close the mouth cavity. So this is what is known as the narrowing of the vowel sound from an uh sound to an a sound. So this is my explanation as to why in the final syllables in Welsh the vowel sounds of the letters e, o and y undergo slight alteration. 
how, for example, the sound of the letter E, which is a, narrows to a as the mouth cavity closes, and the sound of the letter O, which is pronounced o, narrows to an o, and the sound of the letter Y, which is pronounced u, uh, narrows to an u. And I think that this is the correct explanation, rather than as described in some textbooks that I've come across, which say that in the final Welsh syllable, the vowel sounds for the letters e, o, and y need to be pronounced a, o, and e, as opposed to a, er, o, and u. Uh. Even in the final syllables, when I started learning Welsh, I did exactly as these textbooks taught, namely to change the pronunciation in the final syllable of the letters e, o, and y from a, er, o, and u uh, to a, o, and e as a conscious act on my part, and when I did this, I found that my Welsh sounded quite unnatural. But this was how I spoke Welsh for years, without fully understanding why I sounded so unnatural. But then, after years of carefully listening to Welsh being spoken, I came to my current opinion, which I think is a lot more accurate than my previous opinion, that in fact the vowel sounds in Welsh do not change at all in the final syllable, they remain constant all the way through, but for the reasons described, it's the physiognomy of the mouth that causes these slight alterations. Therefore, to make things simple for the beginner, I would say that the narrowed long vowel sounds, as in A, as in say, and O, as in go, do not exist in Welsh. We should not try, consciously, to pronounce the final O as O, but rather it should be pronounced as O, and the final E as A, it should be pronounced as E, but due to the action of the mouth, we may find that, naturally, they might become slightly more narrowed sounding. The narrowed long letter sound E exists in the letter I, and not in the letter Y. Therefore, we never pronounce the Y as an E sound, we pronounce it as an U uh sound. It might change to an E sound, as the mouth naturally narrows, but the E sound is the sound that is used for the letter I. So, moving on, here's the first of the repetition exercises, where we repeat the five stanzas for the Monday of the first week, with there being twelve weeks altogether. And for this, one simply needs to memorise the sounds and meanings of each word in these stanzas. Then one needs to recite them aloud to the tune of Bar Bar Black Sheep at the appointed time on the appointed day of the appointed week. Each line will be repeated twice in this video. As usual, please listen carefully to the first reading of each line and then reproduce aloud the sounds on the second reading. Remember that the accent always falls on the last syllable, therefore when singing, the last syllable of each word should be sung on the note. So here we go. So this is the stanza that we learn and recite aloud before breakfast on the Monday morning of the first week. And because this first stanza is actually the alphabet in Welsh, I'll just give a brief introduction before we do the repetition exercise. First of all, I'll just read for the alphabet, and this is what it sounds like. A, B, ek, ech, d, ed, e, ev, f, eg, eng, h, e, l, ech, m, n, o, p, f, r, chi, s, t, s, i, u, a. So the letter A in Welsh is always pronounced as in the R sound, as in A-R-E. The letter B is pronounced same as in English, as in the word bean. The letter C is always pronounced as a hard ek sound, as in the word back. The letter C-H is always pronounced as in the Scottish word loch. The letter D is always pronounced same as in English, as in the word deal. 
the letter double D is pronounced as in the English th, in the thick th sound as in fathom, or these, or this. The vowel e in Welsh is also pronounced as the air sound as in a i r. The letter f in Welsh is also pronounced as a v sound as in the word ever. The letter double f in Welsh is also pronounced as an f sound as in the word effort. The letter G in Welsh is always pronounced as a hard g sound, as in sag. The letter N G in Welsh is always pronounced as in the word sang, the n sound. The letter H in Welsh is always pronounced the same as in English, as in the word hill. The letter I in Welsh is pronounced as the very pure vowel e, as in eel. But having said this. If the letter I is at the start of a word and is followed by another vowel, then the letter I in Welsh is the consonant Y, as in English. Therefore, we have the word yaith, spelt I A I T H, beginning with the y sound, as in the letter Y, meaning language, yaith, and we have the word yechid, which means health, spelt I E C H Y D. Beginning with the y sound, as in yachid, and then we have the l in Welsh, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in land, and then we have the double l in Welsh, which is pronounced similar to the h l in the word monthly. So if one tried to say the word monthly, and then one and simply pronounced the th sound, then we can pronounce. The names of various Welsh towns, such as Llanelli or Llangollen, so that sound is very similar to the T H L sound in the word monthly. And then we have the letter M, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in the word ham. And then we have the letter N, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in the word hen. And then we have the vowel O, which is pronounced in Welsh. As the sound or, as in the word o a r, or, and then we have the letter p, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in peace, and then we have the letter p h, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in fill, which is the same as the f sound, and then we have the letter r in Welsh, which is always trilled. For example. The Welsh for the number three is tri, and the Welsh for the number four is petwar. Is it important to always trill the r? The answer is yes. The r should always be trilled in Welsh, because when it is preceded by the Welsh for the word of, which is or, or the Welsh for the word to, which is e, changes from e to apostrophe r, which is pronounced r. So we have. Of the car, which is or car, or we have to the car, which is ear car. So if we decide to drop the trill and pronounce it simply as or car or e car, it has a completely different meaning. It just means of a car or to a car. And then we have the letter R H in Welsh, which is pronounced the same as the French R H as in the river Khan. Or the river Rhein in Germany, and then we have the letter S, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in guess, and then we have the letter T, which is pronounced the same as in English, as in teal, and then we have the letter TH, which is pronounced as the soft TH, as in English, as in the word thistle or the name Ethel, and then we have the vowel U. Which actually, a very long time ago, centuries back, was pronounced very similar to the English "u," starting with an "e" sound and then changing to an "u" sound, as in "ew," as in "suit," or "pure," or the musical instrument "lute." But through the course of the centuries, the "ew" sound has shortened to an "e" sound. So nowadays, in the north, it's pronounced as "e." And in the south, it's pronounced as e. I find that many textbooks nowadays say that the sound for the letter u 
in Southern Welsh is the same as the sound for the letter I, which I think is quite inaccurate. For example, if one takes the word for the number two, in the South it's sometimes pronounced as doi, and the reason for that is because it's spelt D-A-U, the D-A part is pronounced da, and the U part is pronounced i. Therefore it becomes dai, dai, dai. If the letter U were pronounced the same as the letter I in the South, then it wouldn't be doi, it would be dai, as in the name D-A-I. And similarly in the South, one comes across the pronunciation pethe, with the ending AU to indicate the plural pronounced as A or E. And the reason why that is, is because the AU is not pronounced as I, it's pronounced as I plus I, which makes it I, I. And because the I is quite a vague sound, I think that's the reason why we have so many different variations of this diphthong throughout the different Welsh dialects from the north pronouncing pithe as pitha and then we have the mid Welsh pronunciation which is also the formal pronunciation which is pithae and then we have the southern pronunciation which is pithe or pithe so the letter u should be pronounced as i or e and not the same as the vowel I, which is pronounced as a very pure E. And then we have the letter W, which is pronounced U, as in the word wool. And then we have the letter Y, which is pronounced U, uh, as in the word Earl. But as described before, because the mouth cavity needs to narrow in order to position itself correctly to pronounce the next syllable or the next consonant, especially when it is at the last syllable of a word, which is the long syllable in Welsh, then the vowel er uh, sound can very often change to an e uh, sound, as in the Welsh word for house, which is tui, tui. If it were pronounced the same as a pure i sound, t, t, that means u singular, whereas t means house. So what we'll do next is that we'll do the repetition exercise for the week one Monday pre-breakfast stanza. I'll sing each line twice, and if you could listen carefully on the first occasion, and then if you could sing together with me on the second repetition. So here we go. R, B, ek, ech, d, ev, e. R, B, ek, ech, d, ev, e. Ev, f, ek, eng, h, e, l. Ev, f, ek, eng, h, e, l. Ech, m, n, o, p, f, r. Ech, m, n, o, p, f, r. Chi, es, t, ev, i, u, o. Chi, es, T F I U O. Congratulations, well done. And we'll now move on to the second stanza. So this one is to be recited and learnt on the Monday of week one before lunch. So once again, I'll just give a brief introduction. As you can tell, this stanza consists of vowels with the carrot or circumflex accent and diphthongs and as well as these we have the words spelt S-I-E, T-S-E and T-S-I-E. Regarding the letters with the carrot or circumflex accent, when we have such an accent over a letter, this does not indicate a change in the vowel sound but rather it indicates a doubling of the vowel length. So, for example, we have the Welsh word spelt T-A-N, pronounced tan, which means until, and then we have the Welsh word spelt the same, but with the accent over the letter A, which is pronounced tan, which means fire.
or we have the Welsh word spelt C A N, can, which means a hundred, and then we have the Welsh word spelt with the circumflex accent over the A, pronounced can, which means song. In English, this would be like the difference between the word cut, C U T, and the word cart, C A R T. But whereas in English, one could use the spelling to indicate the change in the length of the vowel. In Welsh, the consonants and vowels are very ancient, and the reason why that is is because the Welsh have had a continuous literary tradition since Roman times, and because of that, the letters, the vowels, and consonants have retained very constant values, and that is why to indicate the difference between tan and tan and can and can, the carrot or circumflex accent has been used. Similarly, for the letter e, we have the number ten, which is pronounced deg. As well as that, we have the soft mutated word deg, which means fair. So deg means ten, but deg means fair. And similarly, for the letter o, we have the word spelt m o r, pronounced mor, which means so. Therefore, morvar. Means so big, mortawel means so quiet. But as well as that, we have the same word, but with the accent above the letter O, pronounced more, and that means see. Therefore, we have the word more dith, which means sea voyage. Similarly, for the letter U, we have the circumflex accent to indicate the doubling of the length of the vowel U. Therefore, we have the word H U N, which means self. Therefore, we have a phrase like Vahin, which means myself. But if we put a circumflex accent over the U so that it becomes Vahin, that means my sleep, because H U N with a circumflex accent over the U means sleep. And then after that, we have the circumflex accent over the vowel w, and once again, this indicates a doubling of the vowel length. So we have the unaccented word in Welsh, spelt g w y r, gwyr, which is derived from the word for green, gwyr, which means lively or fresh, gwyr. And as well as that, we have the same word. Spelt the same way, but with a circumflex accent over the w, pronounced gwr, and this is the third person singular of the word to know, which means he knows, it knows, or she knows. Gwr, and then after that we have the circumflex accent over the letter y. We've talked about the Welsh word for house, which is t, which is spelt with the circumflex accent over the y. So, for example, we can have a phrase like "the dear," whereas the first word is spelt "dy," meaning your singular, and the second word is spelt "dy" again, but with the circumflex accent over the y, pronounced "dear." So the phrase is pronounced "the dear." And in the previous letter, we talked about the circumflex over the w, and we talked about "gwyr" and "gwyr." But there is also another word spelt G W Y R with a circumflex accent over the Y, which means men, and this is pronounced gwyr. Therefore, one should be careful to differentiate between the word spelt G W I R, which means true, which is pronounced gwyr, and G W Y circumflex accent over the Y R, which is pronounced gwyr. Which means men, and then there is G circumflex accent over W Y R, which is pronounced gwr, which means he knows or it knows or she knows, and then there is G W Y R, which is pronounced gwr, which means fresh or lively or green. And then, as well as the circumflex accent in Welsh, we also have the acute accent. Which rises from left to right, and then we have the graph accent, which descends from left to right. So the acute accent indicates a semi-lengthening or semi-doubling of the vowel, and the graph accent indicates a halving or shortening of the vowel. So, for example, 
in the word Kadarnhai, we have the acute accent over the penultimate vowel, which is A, followed by the letter U, and this is not pronounced Kadarnhai, but it's pronounced Kadarnhai, because in the diphthong AU, the first part of the diphthong, the letter A, is longer, so we have a much longer R sound, so it's Kadarnhai. Similarly, we have the word Kasai, with the acute accent over the penultimate A, so that lengthens the sound of the R, so that becomes Kasai. And similarly, in the word Nakai, which means to deny, we have the acute accent over the penultimate A, so it becomes Nakai, and not Nakai, for example. When we have the graph accent, that indicates a shortening or halving of the vowel length. So we already mentioned the words Khan, C-A-N, meaning a hundred, and Khan, C-A, circumflex, accent of the A, N, meaning song. We also have C, and then graph accent over the A, N, which is pronounced Khan, which means bleach, or whiteness, or white flower. Therefore, we have the verb kani, which means to bleach, which is spelt C-A with the graph accent, N-U, and then we have the word kani, C-A-N-U, which means to sing. If, for example, we were to transliterate the English words huff and puff into Welsh, it would be H-Y-F-F and P-Y-F-F. But if they were pronounced just like that, they would be pronounced as hoof and puff because they would be single or monosyllabic words with the accent on the final syllable. But in order to make them sound like huff and puff, then we need to put the graph accent over the Y in both words. And as well as that, we have the two dots or the diuresis. And once again, the diuresis does not indicate a change in the sound of the vowel, but rather a separation of the vowel from the next so that it forms a separate syllable and is not part of the same syllable as the following letter or the following vowel, which would be in the case of a diphthong. Therefore, for example, we have the Welsh word gardio, which means to garden, spelt G-A-R-D-D-I-O, without the diuresis. But then we have the word guedio, spelt G-W-E-D-D-I, with the diuresis over the I, and then O, so the I and the O are separate syllables, so it's pronounced guedio. And then as well as that, we can have another example, such as the diuresis over the vowel O, followed by the vowel E. So for example, we have the word troid, which is spelt T-R-O-E-D, without any accents, without any diuresis, and pronounced troid, meaning foot. But as well as that, we have the word spelt T R and then O with the diuresis over the O, and then E-D-I-G, pronounced troedig, which means revolving. And this is formed from the word tro, which means a turn, with the ending edig, which means like. So it means turn-like, or revolving, troedig, and not pronounced as troedig which is incorrect. Most times, the diuresis happens on the first vowel in a pair of vowels, which is the reverse of what happens in English or French when we use the diuresis. For example, in the word Noel, for Christmas. And the reason why this is, is because the accent in Welsh is on the final syllable. So rather than indicating an additional syllable needs to be inserted after the strong initial syllable in Welsh, we need to indicate that the additional syllable needs to be inserted before the strong syllable, or the strong accent. So those are the accents. We have the circumflex accent, 
which indicates a doubling of the time value of the vowel. We have the acute accent, which indicates a semi-lengthening of the vowel. We have the graph accent, which means a halving of the time value of the vowel. And then we have the, the two dots, the diuresis, which indicates an additional syllable for that particular vowel. We'll now move on to the diphthongs, which are pairs of vowels next to each other that are pronounced within the same syllable. As mentioned before, the sound values of the letters in Welsh are very constant, and this remains true in the case of diphthongs. Even though there are two vowels within the same syllable, they still retain their constant separate sounds. So, for example, when we have the diphthong AE, the two vowels are pronounced as R and E separately but they are pronounced within the same syllable so they are very short vowel sounds so it's a e a e a e a a e so that is the sound of the a e diphthong a e. it's a very short a plus e a e. and similarly for the diphthong a i these are two very short vowel sounds within the same syllable a and e a e I, 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 A I is pronounced I, and A O is A O, A O, A O, A O. A U is pronounced A I, A I, A I, A I. Depending on how you hear that sound, A, some might hear it as I, some might hear it as E, some might hear it as A. Some might hear it as R, so I think this leads to the variety of regional differences in pronouncing this diphthong. But note that in line one of the stanza, there's actually an acute accent over the A, so this is always pronounced as I, because the first vowel in the diphthong is longer than the second vowel. That is the purpose of the acute accent. And then we have the diphthong A W, and once again, following the same principle as before, it's a u, a u, a u, a u. And then we have E I, which is e i, a, a. And then we have E O, which is e o, l, l, l. And then we have E U, which is e i. Uh, 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 uh. And then we have E W, which is E U, E U, E U, E U. And then we have E Y, which is E R, E R, E R, E R. And then we have O E, which is O E, O E, O E, O E. So, for example, the word spelled O E D, which means age, is pronounced O E D. And the word O E S, which is pronounced O I S, means age. And then moving on to the diphthong O I, which is O E, O E, O I, O I. And then O U, which is O I, O I, O I, O I. And then U A, which is I A, I A, I A, I A. Therefore, we have the word. B U A N, which means soon, and it's pronounced bian, 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 or the word spelt T U A, which means towards, which is pronounced tear, tear, tear. And then after that, we have the word, which is spelt S I E, with the acute accent over the E. It doesn't mean anything, but I've included the word here because. If we wish to indicate the sh sound in Welsh, as in shaw or short or shandy, then we use the w letters s i. So this is used in the names Sean, which means John, spelt s i o n, and the name Shan, which is spelt s i a, with the circumflex accent of the a n. Which is the name Jane in Welsh. So here, on line four, 
is pronounced share. If we wish to indicate the ch sound in Welsh as in the words change or chain or channel, then we use the letters ts. So here on line 4 we have ts and an e with the graph accent which indicates a halving of the vowel sound. So this is ch. Ch. If we wish to indicate the j sound as in jazz or jumper or juniper, then we use the letters tsi. So on line 4 we have the word spelt tsi E with the graph accent over the E, so this is pronounced J. J. And then after that we have the diphthong with the letters U and O, so this is pronounced I O. I O. I O. I O. And then we have the diphthong with the letters U and W, which is pronounced I O. I O. I O. Ew. Ew. And then we have the diphthong, W-Y, which is pronounced U-A, 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 U-A. But note that if this occurs at the end of a word, then the final syllable is always accented, so this is lengthened to, for example, in the word for egg, oi, oi. So we'll now do the repetition exercise for the Week 1 Monday pre-lunch stanza. So once again, I'll sing each line twice, and if you could listen carefully on the first occasion, and join the singing on the second occasion. So here we go. Ah, I, I, ow, I, ow, air. Ah. I, I, ow, I, ow, air. O, A, L, 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 air. E. O, A, L, 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 air. E. E. Oi, 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 e, u. E, oi, 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 e, u. Sha, cha, cha, e, e, oi, e. Sha, cha, cha. Ew, ew, oi, ew. Well done. Congratulations. So now we'll move on to the third stanza, which is to be learned and recited aloud on Monday of week one before tea time. So these are just words listing the topics or categories of vocabulary that we'll be learning in the stanzas over the course of the next 12 weeks. So in line one, we have the vocabulary concerned with language, feeling, plant, bugs, mammal, fish and birds. And in line two, we have the topics concerned with body, people, clothing, house, industry, farm and kitchen. And then on line three, we have leisure, nature, science, education, journey, art and religion. And on line four, we have shop, street, office, finance, law, administration, and health. So these are what these words mean. And the purpose of this stanza is just to familiarize ourselves with what we'll be learning over the course of the next 12 weeks. So what I'll do in this repetition exercise is that, once again, I'll sing it twice for each line. So if you could listen carefully on the first occasion and join in the singing on the second occasion. And just to remind ourselves, because the accent is always on the last syllables, the final syllable of each word needs to be sung on the note in the tune. So here we go. Yaith, Temlad, Planhigin, Preven, Mamal, 
pysgodyn a derin. I aeth, temlad, yn higgyn, prefyn, ma mal, pysgodyn a derin. Corf, pobol, dillad, ti, dwydiant, ferm, cegyn. Corf, pobol, dillad, ti, dwydiant, ferm, cegyn. Ham then, natur, gwedd yn naith, a ddysg, taith, celf, crefydd. Ham then, natur, gwedd yn naith, a ddysg, taith, celf, crefydd. Siop, stryd, swyddfa, cyllid, cyfraith, gwenyddiaeth, iechyd. Siop, stryd, swyddfa, cyllid, Cyfraith, gwenyddaeth, iechyd. Well done. Congratulations. And now we move on to the fourth stanza of the day, which is to be learnt and recited aloud on the Monday of week one before supper. And as you can tell from the translation at the bottom, the first line is concerned with the pronouns I, you singular, he, she, we, you, plural, they. There is no it or neuter gender in Welsh. The second line is concerned with the possessive pronoun. My, your, singular, his, her, our, your, plural, their. The third line translates as of the, of my, of your, singular, of his, its or her, of our, of your, plural, and of their. And the fourth line translates to to the, to my, to your singular, to his, to its or to her, to our, to your plural, and to their. Just to point out that the fourth word on the third line, which is the O, apostrophe I, pronounced as OI, means of his, or of its, or of her, and same again in the fourth word of the fourth line, which is spelt I apostrophe W, which is pronounced EW, that means to his, or to its, or to her. So here we go. V, T, F, he, ni, he, nu. V, T, F, he, ni, he, nu. V, D, E, E, N, E, E. V, D, E, E, N, E, E. Or, Om, Oth, Oi, On, Och, Oi. Or, Om, Oth, Oi, On, Och, Oi. Ir, Im, Ith, Iw, In, Ich, Iw. Ir, im, ith, ew, in, ich, ew. Congratulations, well done. And now we move on to the last stanza for the Monday of week one, which is to be learned and recited aloud before bedtime. And as you can tell from the translation underneath, line one consists of the words, therefore, what? The word that before a consonant, the same word that before a vowel, the preposition on, and then yes and no, and the second line consists of the words very or all right, followed by the number one, and then the word and before a consonant, and the same word and, that is the conjunction a and d and before a vowel, and then we have the verb meaning that it is, and then the verb is, and then the verb that is. And then for line three, we have the various forms of the word or the verb to be, starting with is, and then will be, and then was imperfect, and then was perfect, and then had been, and then may be, and then might be. And then for the fourth line, we have the similar tenses for the verb to do, starting with does, and then will do, was doing, did, had done, may do, and finally might do. So here we go. 
felly peth y yr ar ie na felly peth y yr ar ie na iawn un a ac ydy yw sydd iawn un a ac ydy yw sydd mae fydd oedd biodd biasau byddo byddai mae fydd oedd biodd biasau byddo byddai gwnaif gwnaif gwnai gwnaif gwnaithau gwnelo gwnai gwnaif gwnaif gwnai gwnaif gwnaithau gwnelo gwnai well done congratulations and so those are the five stanzas that are to be memorized and recited before those times on the Monday of week one. And now we'll move on to the second repetition exercise, which is chapter one of the novel written in Pigeon Welsh entitled Er Object Mysterious in a Garden. And once again, each line in this first chapter will be read twice. Please listen carefully to the first occasion and then repeat aloud what you heard exactly on the second occasion. The words that are in Welsh will be highlighted in bold. The words that have any initial consonant mutation will be highlighted as underlined. So that is the first line. So what I'll do is that I'll read it the first time and if you could repeat again when I repeat it the second time. Here we go. The name V U Howell. The name V U Howell. Am I a V and live and village outside Abertawe? Am I a V? and live and village outside Abertawe. A name or village u Penavelin. A name or village u Penavelin. Am I a V and live with the father, mother, brother, sister, dog, Athu cat? Am I a V and live with the father, mother, brother, sister, dog, Athu cat? Name um father il evion name om father il evion name om mother il mevanui name om mother il mevanui name om brother il pris name om brother il pris name om sister il chinos name om sister il chinos Name on dog il fado. Name on dog il fado. Names on cats il jinch are spuds. Names on cats il jinch are spuds. Are a back or house in my garden oh about forty foot long a twenty foot wide. Are a back or house in my garden oh about forty foot long a twenty foot wide. Am I lawn large and a centre or garden? Am I lawn large and a centre or garden? Around the sides or garden am I bushes flowering? Around the sides or garden am I bushes flowering? Ak ar back yawn or garden am I apple trees mature, reaching about fifteen foot tall? Ak ar back yawn or garden am I apple trees mature, reaching about fifteen foot tall? In morning, arrive we and wake earlier than usual. In morning, arrive we and wake earlier than usual. During a night, a piasai a we and hear sounds from a garden back. During a night, a piasai a we and hear sounds from a garden back. Firstly, arrive a we and curious, it discover pith a piasai and happen during a night. Vetli arrive a and curious, I discover, peth aviasai and happen during a night. 
pan onaith a fi an open a curtains, a fi oth a fi an surprised an extreme. Pan onaith a fi an open a curtains, a fi oth a fi an surprised an extreme. And that is all for this lesson. But we have, as already mentioned, some required homework, which is before every breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea, supper, and bedtime. One needs to learn and recite aloud the corresponding stanza. So this needs to be done every day of every week for the next twelve weeks, starting next Monday. When one has completed all the stanzas that have been presented up to one's current stage of the course, one needs to restart back from the beginning the following day. As mentioned, there are twelve weeks in total, with the thirteenth week reserved for resting of the voice. And the five stanzas, as presented in this lesson, are to be learned and recited on the next Monday. So that is the homework. To learn and recite aloud the five stanzas next Monday before the appointed times. And that is it for this lesson. Thank you very much for taking part and joining me in this lesson. I look forward very much to speaking to you again next time. Until next time, I hope you look after yourself and keep well, and I hope you have a nice day. Or as they say in Welsh, Jochen Vaar, Amich Amin Ami, and the video hoon. Don't get better talking with him in high, I can't talk with him in definitely all. Tanatron Nesav, Kaduch Sav Akanyach, Ahuel.